Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. My name is Lisa and today we're off on another stitching ramble. We're going to be stitching part two on the autumn bell pull. Today we're working on this block. We've stitched the background grasses and I'm really happy with how they've turned out. The chrysanthemums, and I don't have them to reference, but I do have several photographs that I can use for reference, plus the photograph that I took of the block when I designed it. I need to choose my colors. It's funny here. We have this whole tray of threads that I collected. And how unhappy am I with what I collected? I've hardly used any of this. Time to get the thread basket out. Hello, Mushu. Mushu, get out of there. No, buddy. <laughs> You're just going to be in the middle of it, I can tell. Well, I think that's going to do for now. No! Mushu, got to be my buddy, huh? Got to see what's going on. I think we're going to start with these darker ones. No, it's not a toy. It's not a toy. <sighs> Kitty. Let's see if we can get stitching on this block. Let's get in some green stems here. And I actually wonder if I got my purple pen. Now that I can see where those are, I'm going to just quickly stitch some stems, but I'm going to do them in a lighter color. I think I may actually do that in this sort of sagey color because when you really look at a mum, the stems are quite a bit lighter. Now I've already been doing stem stitch leaves, so I'm wondering if we should try a little thicker stem. I recently got a book from Jennifer Clouston called Foolproof Flower Embroidery. It might be worth taking a look to see what she has in here. And I actually really am enjoying this book. It's really a terrific reference, and I really like that it's not a specific project book. Let's look at stem ideas. A lot of what she's doing depends on the thread she's using. My typical go-to would be to do stem stitch, but we could also change and turn it into a rope stitch. Let's take a look. So it's almost like a twisted lazy daisy. Let's try it. So learning something new today. All right, so we're going to come up there. So that first one may not be quite exact. Oh yeah, that's actually looking really nice. As long as I keep track of where my line is going. That works pretty easily. It's okay, so I don't need the book anymore, so that's great. Right there, worth it just because just it got me using something slightly different. And that will add texture to the project. That's the kind of thing that helps make stitching look more interesting because you have that variety in it. And I think we're right down to where I have that cupped one. So I'm just going to go in and start it underneath where I intend that next flower to be. You can see the difference already in that can pick up that it's a little heavier and it might be easier to see in person than it is on the camera. The camera tends to really flatten things out. I think we're going to end that one there. It is just sort of a twisted loop here to do this. So I'm coming down on the left and pulling my thread over to the left as well and then coming up just below more to the right and it sort of twists that loop. I want to make sure I'm coming up inside the loop. And it just it makes a nice neat ropey looking stitch. I know I've done it in the past, but it's been a while. We're really sort of joining up with another stem. And if you're no chrysanthemums, that's the way they do. They've got a very branching structure coming off of one another. Bring that down like that. Let's leave some room for leaves and stuff. 
do think I need a stem over here though. So we'll knot this off. I'm really close to the seam line of this. So I'm going to come out and make my knot just so I don't have all that bulk right near the seam. One of the things I've learned since making these blocks is I try and do my basting thread in a darker color so it's easier to see and that makes it easier to pull out later on as well as helping me figure out where I'm at when I'm stitching. I'm really close to that basting line so I'm going to bring it up a little bit so I'm not right down at the base. That first stitch is always a little tricky. This one's actually going to almost follow that seam in. So I'm just kind of bringing all these little stems down to a similar point. So there's that one. Now I've got that framework in, I think I'm going to go ahead and work on flowers. I realize I'm not entirely happy with what I have for the more orangey flower. I think that's still the best one, but I think it's going to need some, some yellow in it. Well, we'll start. I realize I need to take a look at the picture. I printed off just a couple of pictures. So I had taken some pictures of the flowers and I took a picture of the block when I did it. Now I haven't done any editing to these so the colors are not quite right, but I think this actually is not too bad for that. But I'm wondering if I need to go get some yellowish to accent that. And I do think this lighter color is gonna be better See, I told you, I'm just not happy with everything that we've got going. As usual, I've got all kinds of things. I actually am really liking this one. For those lighter ones, what do you think? We're looking at some of these other blocks. That picks up those orangey tones. We have that orangey pumpkin. Move into this for the darker centers. So see how the centers get darker in that? So if I did this for the outer petals and this for the inner petals, I think that's going to work really well. I, I really liked that one at first, but it's way too bright. We're going to start with this big one. When I have a skein of this, I just grab one loop of it, kind of somewhere near the middle, hold my ends and pull, and it just slides right out. For these chrysanthemums, I really want the variegation in the thread. Now I need to mark my center on this so it's up a little bit and so we have petals that come up and then we're going to have bigger ones that come down. So I'm going to actually start with those bigger ones that are coming down and I'm going to be just be making big lazy daisies with these and then we're going to go back in and do some fill in. They're getting shorter as they come around and they're much thicker and closer together. So this is where my little guidelines come in very handy here. And my hope is by the time we're done with this, it really looks like a chrysanthemum. Stylized, of course. And if they overlap a little bit, that's okay too, because petals do that. And then once in a while you get one that sticks out just a little bit further than the others. So let's start putting in a few shorter petals over the top here. And I need to remember to come in toward the center a little bit as well. And here already, they're again starting to come up. I'm going to go through a lot of thread, I think. I think that's about as far as I can go with that piece of thread. So the stitching on this is really going to be pretty thick. I think I want to do just a little bit more with the same thread. All right, so then let's switch to that darker color. I'm moving this always into the center. So in this dark section, I think they almost all go upward. And I may come back and put in a couple of lighter ones that sit on top of these darker ones. There is a lot of thread there. Maybe just one here that comes down. What do you think? Does it look like a chrysanthemum? I want to put just a couple of lighter ones coming up here. It just helps give it some dimension. Now this would have looked great in silk ribbon embroidery as well, but since there's almost no silk ribbon embroidery on the rest of this project, I was afraid that it would seem a little bit out of place. 
So let's call that one done. I'm starting on the second chrysanthemum. I think what I'm going to do, since it's the same process as the other one, we're going to speed up the recording a little bit. And that way, you don't have to sit and watch every one, and I have less editing to do. I'll see you in a little bit. I have the chrysanthemum stitched. I'm just going to do some little satin stitches here. We're just trying to connect that to the stem. I think I'm actually at that point I could transition to that rope stitch and join it in right there. It's a simple little thing, but it makes such a difference in how it looks. And then I can always bring a couple of little side shoots up. I don't think we need much. I think that is actually really good right there. So that finishes that off could come over here and kind of finish this stem off. I think that one just looked like it was going to sit funny if I didn't connect it. I think I thought I was going to have more petals coming down there than I ended up with. That works. I really like this style of leaf. I do find it helpful to mark the direction of the leaf and then we have, so what I want is the center of the leaf. All right, so there's one leaf. I think we need to put another one up here, a little baby one right there. So we're gonna go here. This one's really turning out to be more of a satin stitch leaf, that's fine. Right, so I think we're gonna call that leaf just about done. Well, I'm at this point where I need to stop and then I'll be back and hopefully finish stitching. I think it's been a week or two since I stitched on the autumn bell pole. I got the flowers done the last time and the stems, but I didn't get very far on the leaves. So that's what I'm going to do today. I had hoped to have it done by the end of November, but I obviously did not make that deadline. So I'm really happy with how this is looking, and now I just need to fill it in with leaves. And I do have my picture here to give me some guidelines. I think as I look at this, we've got a couple of leaves in here. So just trying to get my bearings on some of this. And so I am just going to get stitching. I was working on these leaves before, and I'm pretty happy with those. Let's go down here to this one. I'm not going to do these all the same. I think I want this one to be a satin stitch, actually. I think that's the way it's going to show up the best. I definitely am scooping my stitches when I do this. made that leaf turn and now I think I'm going to do stem or outline stitch. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and bring that right back over toward this stem. So I think we're just about done with this little leaf. I think I'm going to put one more row here. So I'm getting into a lighter area of thread and that will help highlight the edge of this part of the leaf. Okay, there's that. So where do I want to go next? I think we need to put another leaf in here that comes up and over. This one's not going to be a big one, it's just going to be a pretty small one. 
But I'm going to use the same method that I've been using where I'm just sort of doing rows of straight stitch next to one another. I like the effect that they have and I can really shape with it. Now I had cut my thread too long and I do notice that it's starting to get a little more frayed so that's something you want to watch for. It's one of the reasons not to cut threads quite so long because every time you pull it through the fabric it erodes it. Okay there's that one. Hey we're just going to jump right up here into this one. How do I want to do that leaf? Let's just go for it. bring that leaf down to this stem here a little bit more noticeably. We need some bigger leaves in here. I think we need to throw up a leaf or two back here. Let's change colors though. Let's use should I use that one or this one? They're really quite similar, but this one's a little bit cooler, and I think I like that better. I think it's maybe more in keeping with what I've been doing. I'm sort of feeling like this flower didn't end up big enough, and I wonder if I need to come back and bring in some more petals. I think that flower just needs to be significantly bigger. And in looking at it, I kind of feel that way about this one too. I think it needs to also be bigger, especially on this bottom side. I think I got a little small with those. But let me put this leaf in so it'll look like it's behind the flower. And you'll notice I'm not necessarily following all my lines and stuff. As I'm working, I'm trying to feel my way along the project and adapt to what I think it's going to need. There, that's good. Yeah, we need those bigger leaves in there. I realized getting that one in. Yeah, I'm looking at those and I think every single flower ended up a lot smaller than I was expecting. But you know, I think it's still in scale. Let's look at these other blocks. I, I definitely need to enlarge this one and this one. I think if I do those two, I think it'll bring it into balance. I think that'll be good. My biggest problem these days seems to be choosing thread, and I know which threads I used on this, but this one has so much variegation in it. I sort of wish I just had a nice burnt orange to use here, but I think we already looked and we have out what I have. And that's too dark, not yellow enough, too gold. <laughs> it's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. None of it is just right. I like that one. We might use this that one on here. Let's set that out for that. So I guess we're going to go ahead and stick with this one. I think we're going to try some concentric lazy daisies to get fatter, more prominent petals. I know we did a little bit of that on the rest of the flower, but I don't think I did it quite as much as I probably should have in spots. I actually think it's looking better already. I just needed that little bit of extra, I think. This block has just been a fun block to play on. I think that's one of the things I've really enjoyed about it. Just not trying to be too precise and just letting it flow. Really have enjoyed that part of it. I'm going to come up and put a straight stitch down that one. That's a really big petal. Well, I don't know about you. I think that's better. I do think I need to come over here and put a couple in over here. I've got some lighter color on here and I have this one that's really orange and I need to dull it down just a smidgen so we're going to run a straight stitch up that. There we go. I'm, that's much better size. It demands attention and that's what I was looking for there. So I'm happy with that one. 
Yeah, I think this is too light over on this one. So let's bring in this one. Yeah, because that needs to be quite a bit bigger. Truthfully, this little bit I got down way too far. So I think we need to bring more of the darker down here. But I'm going to go a little lighter up here. It's interesting to me how having a few days away from this has given me a little different perspective on it and what it needs. Even as a painter, I often find that sometimes the best thing you can do is walk away from something and come back to it. That you get a much clearer perspective on what's going on. I think a lot of life is like that, don't you? That, you know, when we're having problems and troubles that a lot of times we just need to step back and see what's take the emotion out of it maybe take what seems so overly important in the moment and look at it with a slightly different perspective I think that can help so much in so many things I think we would avert a lot of problems if we just wouldn't react so emotionally to things but that's human nature too so Actually, I'm really liking this color. That was what that burgundy needed to bring it out of its deep dark. Okay, I need to get that burgundy out. So this thread, I actually would like to keep using that. So I think I'm going to just bring this around and pin it up on top. And then we'll use the other needle and thread this up. And then I can come back in with that other one to add some more accent. Now I'm not filling in the centers of these because I think I'm going to come back with this one that we just were doing up here and add some highlights and things. That thread is so dark I can't always tell where I'm at with it. Okay, then we'll go a few more over here on the side. And again, I'm not staying exact to my picture reference. I'm just Kind of letting it flow and seeing where I think it needs things. One of the things you may know is I'm sort of trying to square this off because a lot of times when you look at these flowers they do have more of a blocky shape rather than being perfectly round. All right so let's come back in with that orangey and tidy up some of that and I'm not like I did with that thread I'm not going to tie this one off just yet. I'm going to kind of leave it here. So we're going to accent a few of these petals. And this yellow has actually been bothering me as being just a little too light in the center of those. So I'm going to bring one of these orangey petals right over the top of that. it up just a little bit. All right, let's take a look. Do we need anything else on that? I think that's actually pretty good. I think I'm going to leave that because I feel like if I do much more to it, it's going to have too much and then I won't be happy with it. So that is thick stitching in this one. And then let's go ahead and tie off this one because I don't think I need any more of that. So I need to focus on leaves now. I'm pretty happy with the flowers. I may add a little more to that one. I'm not positive. It sits on top of everything though. So I don't think I need to do a whole lot. But I need to get a couple of bigger leaves in here. Especially over in this corner. Let's see. What color are we going to use? What about that one? It's got a little less of the light color in it. And I like that. Some of these leaves get this shape. That, you know, they come down and they have a vein. But as they get bigger, they're a little lobed. And so I want to put a couple in like that. And I'm thinking one of those right in here would be good. And then we might do something in here, I'm not sure. Well, let's just get stitching. We're going to actually try a variation on a buttonhole. I 
the legs of the buttonhole are all coming in at this inner seam line and on the outside is where the buttonhole is. And you can really do some interesting things with that technique and I've used it quite a bit before because you can turn it and see right there is a lobe of a leaf. So I'm going to come back in here and then we'll start And so right now I'm working on the far side of the leaf, so it's a little shallower. And right here is where it kind of comes back in. And then we're going to go out and get that rounded tip. So when I'm doing that rounded tip, my stitches at this end are all coming out of the same point, or very nearly the same point. They're not traveling like they were earlier. start moving back just a little bit. We can bring out that next lobe. I really love leaves done this way. I think they can, you can do so many things with them. I've made interesting maple leaves before. So now I have to watch here because I, I do need to be traveling. Otherwise I get ahead of myself and it turns back on itself and that's not as nice. And the variegated thread here really helps as well gives it some interesting dimension. And so now I think we're popping back out another lobe. I know we talked about this earlier, that this block is definitely more of a motif block rather than your traditional crazy quilted piece. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and look at it. Are there any places I need to fill in? And I do see a spot right here where there's kind of a big opening. And I want to cover that. And of course, what you can see through it right now is the blue of my water soluble marker. And then I've got one here where we were going across that stem. I want to cover it up just a little bit more. I think that's probably good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe, maybe one back over here. This I don't have my glasses on. I probably should have my glasses on. I probably wouldn't have had as many gaps. Reddish stem here. There's quite a bit of that showing. We want to turn that into leaf. All right. So that big leaf makes a big difference. So I definitely need to get another one in here. I was originally thinking, oh, this isn't going to take me too long. And we've already been stitching for an hour. I really like that choice of thread. So I'm going to use it again. Oh, let's bring one of those big ones off right here. With these, it's important to mark that middle vein. And then we'll think about another one there. I tend to work better in a particular direction. So that's why you saw me turn that around. I work better if I, on buttonhole if I can go from left to right. And it's, you know, it's one of those funny things. Some stitches I don't need to do that. And other stitches I work far better right to left. Trying to be just a little more careful with my spacing here. I'm going to bring one back. And if I need to, I don't hesitate to go back in the same hole I was down here on this bottom side. It's that outer one that's got to really keep moving. But if I'm trying to turn a corner and it's not working, go use the same hole again. This would probably be done better in a slightly thicker thread. Um, it does really well with embroidery floss. There. Mm -hmm. 
So where should we go next? I think we need to do something up here. And originally I kind of had it going that way, but I think we're going to bring it this way. So we'll just tuck it right in there. I'm going to keep using that same thread. I actually really like that, how it looks on the block. I think it's doing a nice job, so we'll just stick with it. I may end up covering a little bit of this other leaf, and that's okay too. I know with filming this kind of thing, it's a little hard to see since this isn't in a hoop and is being handheld. Apologize for that. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then let's do this one here. Do another one of these fishbone leaves. Once we get all the lines off of this, the blue and purple lines that I've drawn, it'll be a lot easier to see what's here and what needs done. So that I think may actually be just about my next step. We'll take a look and see if I need to get any more smaller leaves in here. I feel like we need to bring one of these colored leaves out over here to balance. And actually, if I look, if I look at the photo, there is one coming off right under the flower, and look, there's kind of one here too. I think it needs to be up here though. So three more leaves, and I think we're done. So I'm just going to do a fishbone one here. This is not going to be a very big leaf. The effect won't be quite so pronounced. Yeah, that's good there. Okay. This one's not going to be very big either here. It just fills in the hole, carries the color through. So let's go do this one. Let's take a look at it. I'm really pretty happy with all of this. I'm a little surprised to see that my block actually ended up the brightest of the blocks because I didn't feel like I was stitching bright at all. We do have a pretty similar color match with these flowers, that helps, and also with this down here. So that helps balance it out a little bit. Here we have all the blocks. This is the top half of the bell pole, and this is the bottom half of the bell pole. And so you can see how the landscape blocks all tend to weight toward the left, and yet the floral blocks all weight toward the right. It works out pretty well. Looking at it and trying to see if there's anything else that I need to do to any of the blocks, and the only thing I'm seeing is I still need to get rid of this thing that's in colors that just don't go with the rest of it. So I'm going to pull this out and then I'm going to see if this space needs anything else. I think we're virtually done. We're going to leave it at this today with the embroidery done except for whatever happens here. In the next video I'll put it together as a bell pull. Well thank you so much for coming along with me today and spending your valuable time watching me as I stitch on my autumn block and get this one finished. I'm so looking forward to having another project finished. Have a beautiful day, happy stitching, and I'll see you in the next video.